Travis Wayne Goodsell. I'm still here. I ended up getting a stomach flu after I managed to only pack my computer equipment and clothes. Still had food and uh, hygiene and books. Turns out that notifying about the sickness is uh, allowing them or allowing me an extension till the 31st of August. which now that I have an actual deadline I can work on scanning certain books that have pictures well they're mostly up here making sure I have all the files that I need I'll have to uncancel a number of subscriptions Was all set to be gone already. Looking at a map of the United States, I realized I wasn't going to make it far. Back when my first ex, Stephanie, saw the window of opportunity to leave, as she got mad at me for letting her know that her idea for family home evening with our kids was an excellent idea. She got mad at me and slammed the door on myself and our two little kids at the time to help calm the kids down as they were in shock and scared we went for the walk as Stephanie had planned when we came home the kids you know they wanted to find out if mom was okay so they ran upstairs we were staying in my parents basement I had just graduated from the University of Lethbridge had uh, in February of that year 1997 because this was now April it was after conference <coughs> I had informed Stephanie that I had deciphered Paleo Hebrew while she went upstairs she covered up the fact that that she had been the one uh, who had slammed the door and led my parents to believe especially my dad that I slammed the door so yeah my dad then when the kids got back took Stephanie and the kids to my Sister Tiffany's house, or Tara Lynn's, probably switched back and forth, I don't know, <coughs> for their protection. And then they were just gone. Parents didn't tell me they'd taken them away. I had no idea what happened. They were just gone. went to the parking lot of this Jordan River Temple every single day to just escape before I came home from work. And then 
my mom decided to aggravate matters. She came down to my bedroom, flashing the family proclamation as if I were in violation of it. Wouldn't tell me what I was in violation of. I wasn't in violation of it. Stephanie and now my parents were now in violation of the family proclamation. It's amazing how people can turn things around on you. My mom would not leave. I begged her, please leave. Just go away. Leave me alone. My wife and kids are gone and I don't know where they are. Leave me alone. And she just wouldn't leave and so I tried raising my voice to yell over her loud voice and my dad had heard all he needed to hear <clears throat> it was an unfinished basement so there wasn't as many layers to muffle things as much as would normally have been and so I heard him get up out of the bedroom that was straight up above and uh, storming down the hall and I knew that I had to leave because he was ready to fight and I've never been in a fight never been violent and so I grabbed my coat as it was still kind of cool for springtime and left I wandered uh, south into Harriman there was a steak center I saw some people that were having an activity that night tried to see if I could sleep on the cement. No, I could not. It got too cold, even with the coat. I was still in a state of shock. They're not responding. five minutes now. How long does it take to agree to the terms that they said? <coughs> I did say I wanted no contact with Samantha who started the hostile environment. As I pointed out, I'm going on six years with no violations. Lawyers cannot pull lawyer talk with me. It will just piss me off. Actually, no. I just left to get away, get away and get out of the house. I then came back. Wow, it's been so long now. I came back to the house hoping that tensions had dropped, snuck in, but uh, they called the bishop over. And uh, Dad came down and uh, told me to get out of the house. And if I'm going to be violent, <coughs> slam doors. But he wants me gone. There was no negotiating. There was no saying, it wasn't me, dumbass. And so I was on my way out, 
grab the coat, and that's when the bishop decided he's going to intervene now. And uh, he said, if I leave, I will go through the worst hell I've ever experienced. Yeah, thanks for the curse, Bishop, as you aided and abetted in my wife leaving. And pretended to be dumb. Oh, I think you've lost her. And then, uh, I just left. I don't do well with extortion demands. <sighs> Haven't even showered and shaved today. <sighs> I was going to wait to do that near the last and then close down my internet service as the final thing. I'll miss my laundry day today. But yeah, I got to the church, couldn't sleep at the stake center. Our church, I don't know, they're all big these days. Uh, and then realized I couldn't sleep on the cold cement, so I kept on walking. I ended up in a uh, the backwoods uh, near the the uh, National Guard place and where now they've built the the uh, is it the NSA spy station where they're storing all of our data from the internet and cell phone service and refusing to claim that they're doing that yeah, and how many terabytes did you put in your facility? Which I think goes beyond terabytes. <laughs> God. <clears throat> but uh, long story short, uh, Joseph Arntz uh, caught me on the road to Nephi and uh, took me to a grocery store bought me a couple of items of food and then went walking on the 15 or somewhere uh, because a sheriff's office or sheriff's officer uh, I think it was the sheriff himself he had the Star of David shield <clears throat> and uh, during the ride back to the station he says you don't look like a vagrant <laughs> and I told him my parents kicked me out and uh, said you don't and so then he wanted to be matchmaker because he was talking about how he heard in a the conference by this man named Hinckley. <laughs> that uh, something love, love, whatever. And family, the family thing, I think, too. I don't know. And so he, instead of booking me as the other officers, in Harriman, in those uh, homes out there, who had been previously gotten robbed, so they thought that I was coming back to rob them, and so they were demanding I hand over my identification to them, and uh, they blocked my path, so I couldn't go anywhere. And they were about ready to jump me, but the cops came quick enough, and so then they saw my ID and sent me to Provo to walk to the shelter there and I said yeah thanks and that's when I went walking the highway 
or the freeway or whatever it was. And so uh, he took me back to the station. He called my parents. I talked to my parents. And I said, I'm not coming back if you're going to treat me like this. And then that's when they said, Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do whatever you say. Yeah, and when higher authorities are involved, they cave and claim innocence, and claim ignorance. And so when they took me to pizza, they confessed that Stephanie had confessed that she was the one who slammed the door. Too late now. Because uh, they told me that she was at uh, Tiffany's place now. Whether she was at Terrellin's, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. One day my dad said, uh, I'm going to get the car checked, so I'll take my car to work. I come home from work. My car is all packed. Stephanie's divorced dad is with his return missionary sister, or with Stephanie's return missionary sister from Taiwan, <coughs> as they've got a U-Haul truck or a trailer attachment to the back of their vehicle. And uh, I'm like, oh. And so in the basement, I'm looking to see what she left me. She took all my computer equipment, all my research, saying that the kids need it. But my kids aren't going to learn Hebrew. That was her reasoning for leaving me. I proved Joseph Smith is a translator, and she says, that's it, I'm out. I don't want my kids learning that Joseph Smith is a translator. Oh, okay. So, I've been telling you about how the church doesn't like me being a translator and showing that Joseph Smith is right. And out the door she went. And she had to throw in, I don't think I ever loved you. Twist the spoon just a little to the left, please. Why a spoon, you ask? Because it hurts more. <laughs> Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. <laughs> the, naughty, the Sheriff of Nottingham. And so, yeah, the one country song, I think it's Dixie Chicks. Uh, she was four and she he was two and she's four something like that so yeah that for years after that hearing that song I would immediately break down in tears the shock that I went through as mom's visiting teachers came over to distract my mom away from me as I go wandering the house went downstairs. The first time I broke down was on my way to work in the car that my uh, dad bought for me and I had to pay him back. I think I paid him back too much. I lost count of how much I owed forgot that I was only supposed to pay back a certain amount. Now, those who ought to have been my friends, those who ought to have been my family, those who ought to have been my fellow Mormons, Oh, he's not even responded yet. What the hell?